and welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train, Jared Freed, coming to you live from the quarantine cabin on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. We are here Mondays and Thursdays with your emails, your stories, your questions. I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. That's how it works. Uh, this time of year, I get a little reflective. I'm sure a lot of you do too, and I want to say thank you. Thank you. This has been a, a hard year for everyone. I don't care what your circumstance is. Some of you, you know, you couldn't get on the yacht this summer. Some of you couldn't, you know, afford food and rent. So, but we all had a tough time. And uh, it means a lot to me that you've trusted this podcast to be the one that takes your brain on out of your head and puts it on the shelf. You let Papa JT take the wheel. So I appreciate that fully. Um, if I want you to go subscribe on YouTube, I want you to become Patreon members. That's all in the description of this episode, but I've talked enough about that. I'm very excited about today's guest. Uh, first timer on the podcast, hilarious comic, Kath Barbadoro. Thank you for coming on. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to judge other people's lives. I can't That's wait. What, that is what we do here. We, we get out the mallet. Look at it. I got my... <laughs> My mallet to start Amazing. judgment. That's right. Uh, Kath, I, I, there's sometimes, and I said this to you before, sometimes people's names you just hear around. I hear about you a lot. I hear about how funny you are. I'm excited. You are suggested by Shelby, our producer, um, who people take. I take Shelby's opinion very seriously because Shelby has an opinion. He Shelby has an opinion and it is a very informed opinion because he has listened yes. to so many comedians <laughs> who think they're funny talk for so long. That's his yes. job. It is and, his job. Uh, he normally he's he is incredibly professional. He's incredibly polite. He's incredibly good at his job. But scratch the surface and that man has opinions. That man that, has well, strong that, opinions. That is what's so uh what I love about him so much. And for those listening, I know this has been a weird year, but Shelby, classic Shelby, is the producer of, of this podcast. And when we were in studio, he was on every episode. So, And we hope to get back to that. I'm going to do a classic Shelby episode coming soon. So he's going to be back on the show. So there are listeners here that don't even know who we're talking about. And he was such a – he's the linchpin of this whole operation. And Shelby is a man of few words, but when you get him to talk a little bit – He'll give you that's I because I'm I never shut the fuck up. So I'm one of those people that people are like, yeah, but Jared, you know, he's talking. Nobody's listening because you'll get <laughs> you'll you'll hear me at some point. Shelby, when he puts his hand to the sky and he gives you a little jewel, it is a jewel. So I, yeah. I completely agree with what you're saying. <laughs> so you come recommended by Shelby. He also produces your podcast. Both of you, you have two podcasts. I do. He produces one of them. Um, he okay. produces What a Time to Be Alive, which is a weekly podcast about dumb news stories. And uh, great Shelby, name. Hmm? Great name for the podcast. What a Time to Be Alive. And Thank it's you. Dumb news stories. And Shelby finds that he finds the news stories because he used to do that for us here. He we all submit the stories. But Shelby is main role on the podcast. Uh, he is a incredibly like yours the linchpin of the podcast but he communicates mm. only in uh the soundboard so he's like the bumblebee of our podcast oh where, god he's uh, doing he, he's doing his bit he's doing this is what he does on my show this is he, he's you this is his bits? medium this is yeah. his language he <laughs> okay. has to he can only speak through sound clips Love of it. donald trump talking about pigs in a blanket that's oh my god he's re <laughs> i feel like i'm being cheated on he he, he was using the donald trump Bits on here. Come on. Get him out of here. He was play, playing that bit a thousand times an episode. Oh, look, my God. This is his language. He has to spread. This is his art. He that is his look, art. I, I tell jokes on other people's podcasts. He does sound clips on everyone's. He, and he, I, one, he started doing the soundboard clips a few years ago. And I remember we had a conversation. I was like, dude, do as many as possible. Those are fucking <laughs> hilarious. I go, whatever you do, I'm going to go along with. And then like a week later, he came back and he started playing them. And I was like laughing, loving it. And then all of a sudden he had like 
like he would be like because i say the the email address and listen we're going to get to the emails jtrain podcast at gmail.com i say that a million times an episode to let people know where to send the emails and he he would have a guy being like jtrain podcast at gmail.com and then i was like that's hilarious i love that then the next one was like my, the guy saying my home address <laughs> And then it was like the next one was like my phone number. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, it, it was a perfect bit. It was so funny. So I, I know what he does. Yeah. I don't know where, I don't know what his sources are for where he gets these voice actor people to like roast all of the people whose podcasts he produces. But yeah. it's, he has like, yeah, a, a f- army of like weird guys on Fiverr that he just uh, makes say stuff to <laughs> torment it's us. It's amazing. Unbel- Unbelievable. So what a time to be alive. That is just weird news stories. You're just cracking wise about these stories. Yeah, it's uh, me and uh, comedians Patrick Monahan and Eli Uden. And uh, the the tagline of our show is uh, it's the only podcast that counts down the things each week that make you say the thing that's the title of the podcast. So that's our premise. Love it. A little long, but, you know, the (laughs) T-shirt's... The T-shirt's going to be tough. Yeah, a little wordy. <laughs> um, we might have to take out a billboard to, you know, <laughs> to give you some ad space. But I yeah. love it. I, I, I'm into that. I, I think that's all fun. I think there's so many podcasts now. It's strange that that we were like, oh, we have this brand new medium. Anyone can use it. And everyone's like, I'm going to do murder and serious and make you cry. And it's like there's so few that are like uplifting and fun. And this sounds like so much fun. Yeah, it's funny, like, when we started, we always knew it was going to be, like, a lot of dumb. It's a lot of, like, animals escaping from places and being in places where they shouldn't be and classic, you know, that kind of stuff. But when we started, we did, like, more kind of politics-y things sometimes. Like, we would do Mm -hmm. more actual news. And we realized very quickly, like, oh, we're not that funny when we're just, like, really mad. Like, that's (laughs) not... I don't think... I don't think anybody's funny when they're mad. I think you have to be the the problem with political stuff is you have to there's always something that you have to know more about than the next person. You have to bring something (laughs) to the table. I've realized very quickly that with political stuff, I bring nothing to the table. I bring no extra information. I never bring anything that's interesting or smarter than the next. And it's like you have to be that's why those political comics, the real successful ones are actually geniuses that are misusing their talent. Yeah, yeah, they could be doing something much more productive. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the other nice thing about not doing politics is like very few people are going to be concerned about fact checking. You're like paraphrasing Absolute, of a story sure. about like vultures attacking <laughs> people in Florida. Like that's not you're not going to get angry emails about how you got stuff wrong. So no. that is great. We can just know nothing. And it's. Ooh delightful i love it so you it's called what a time to be alive now you have another podcast called lie cheat steal what is that one what's the deal there that one actually kind of is a true crime podcast but again (laughs) you're like everyone's gonna have one (laughs) you gotta have one i mean yeah percentage wise uh they don't allow you to do podcasts unless you sometimes talk about crimes um i get it but it's uh it's not murder or anything it's just like scams and cons and grifters Ooh, and stuff I, like that that is fun so what's like the most fun one that you've had um man we've had uh, there's one that's it's kind of complicated but one of my favorite ones we did recently was about this guy who was um he was like a running this scam on people looking for roommates in New York where he would constantly be like getting new new people to sublet his apartment and then coming up with these really dramatic excuses for why they couldn't move in. And uh, th- the whole thing basically ended up with um, all of the subletters coming to the abandoned apartment at the same time and realizing that they'd all been duped. Oh my and this God. Guy was like, he had the, such an interesting story. He was like a celebrity photographer that had fallen from grace and was in debt and was like just really charming and running all of these like weird scams on people who are just desperate for New York real estate. It was it was incredible. So so would you say most of these people are in like a desperate situation? I mean, all of them have to do with someone who's like, I got to get money and I got to get it fast. Right. We've we've had like a bunch of different types of scammers it's pretty broad like i just did i just recorded one that i'm editing right now about uh manti teo's fake girlfriend do you remember what that a whole story th- what an embarrassing story so uh his name is manti manti teo i think he still plays in the nfl right 
Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's on the Browns or something. If that's he's on team, the Browns right? now, but he was. He, yeah, that's a team. He was, but he was drafted by the San Diego Chargers. But he played at USC. He was one of the most famous football players in the country. And then this happened, and he kind of just disappeared from public. Like, yeah, I, it feels like it embarrassed him out of having any public persona. Yeah, like he played he he's played in the NFL since, but it was yeah, it was in like 2012. It was when he was in college and uh it was his senior year and he was like the star and he he played for Notre Dame and so like Notre those Dame. people fucking love football. They were going yeah. nuts for him. And he had this heartbreaking story about how his girlfriend had died and he won a game oh the God. night of her funeral and all this stuff. They reported it in Sports Illustrated. It was like a I real remember thing. Well, I'm a I'm a sports fan. I keep up with story and I'm a fan of stories like these. Like I like yes. the score Notre Dame Notre Dame USC. Like I yeah, he was a Notre Dame. Notre Dame winning or losing fine whatever like but the story of like oh they're playing this guy's got a, a girlfriend that passed away like oh okay human interest i'm interested and when this came out that it was all a not real person like wild yeah bananas it was like one of the first big stories about somebody being catfished like it was yeah. early days of catfishing well i think it, i think this is the story that made people realize it could happen to you like yes. i i think because catfishing we think of you know kind of depressed older woman who you know got taken advantage of because she doesn't know that you know how to use an iphone like it's right. kind of like you know like and then you see someone who's young good looking and fantastically successful at what he's doing. And you're like, Oh shit. The, the game has changed. Yeah. And the thing that makes it like an extra crazy, like story too, is he was like such a good guy. He yeah, just yeah, was yeah. like a big sweetie. And he, like his whole public persona was that he was this, he was like super close with his family. He had this like big Samoan family and they were all so proud of him. Yeah. He was Mormon. He was like very religious, and like all was, this stuff. And then he just gets had. But legitimately the face of college football. Like, and now. I knew about him and I didn't yeah. I don't watch football. And not even for the catfishing story. It was just, you knew him. Like, yeah, that's, I think that's the most, well, that's actually like the depressing part of the internet. Like, like, we, you know, we, I, I, I kind of roll my eyes at the person who was like, I was bullied in high school that like is like 35. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you were bullied. Like, no, 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 no. Uh, people bullied now. Like it's, it's on steroids. Like you're not just bullied by your, you know, the, the mean people in your high school. You're bullied by every mean person <laughs> alive that yeah. hangs out on Reddit. Like, you know, <laughs> if, if your story gets bad enough. So like this was kind of that first one where you're like, Ooh, the joke is funny, but it's not that I, it, it's it's going to be less funny from here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, that's a really good way to put it, that it it this would be like a, a private embarrassment over like AOL instant messenger totally. <laughs> a decade ago. But now it's like this national story ESPN that he can't live reporting down. reporting on it. Yeah, I do. I did. The reason I did the story uh, this week, though, was because there is a happy ending. Manti Teo just got married to a real live woman. So Does he, uh, he has uh, moved I love on. That. I love that. <laughs> Congratulations to the Teo family. Does he... Was I, I wonder if they joke about it. That's my, like, I That's wonder a, yeah. if he has a sense of humor about it because it doesn't seem like he does considering how little you hear from him. I mean, I, like, I I think I have a pretty thick skin. I, yeah. I'm i pretty self-deprecating. I, I like doing roasts. I've done a lot of, people have said mean things about me and I've laughed. If I had gone through what he had gone through, I don't know if I would be able to joke about I, it. <laughs> would you? So here's what I'm wondering. Would you take, like, let's say, like, Tinder, I think, has, like, a verification thing where they'll give you a blue check mark to let people know you're real or that your pictures look, I don't know what it is. Let's say you're the most famous comedian alive, Kath, <laughs> and in your past, you're famously catfished, but then Tinder's like, we'll give you... 10 grand to be the face of the verification. What's the <laughs> amount of money that gets you as the face of that? Like, is it a million dollars? Is it a hundred grand? Is it 10 grand? I, it would take a lot of money for me. I like, like, cause to me, like Mancy Teo, 
if he had done like I'm the face of Tinder as a way, like and we would all connect it and we would go, oh, perfect spokesperson, you know? Yeah, and we would like love him. I think the I think the thing is like, if nobody knew that was in my past, I would be like, you have to pay me quite a bit for me sure, to do that. Sure, sure. <laughs> if it was already public knowledge, like fine, whatever, I'll lean into it. I'm not happy well, about it, but I will lean into it for money. No question. I'm excited to have you here, Kath. I want everyone to go follow you at Kath Barbadoro on Instagram, right? Yes, I, uh, I'm usually that on Twitter too, but I turned it off because uh, I don't think... I don't think I'm going to come back until people are allowed to go outside again because it's crazy on there. But yeah. when I come back, I'm <laughs> Kath Barbadoro on Twitter. At Car- Kath Barbadoro on Instagram and Twitter and the podcast. What a time to be alive. Lie, cheat, and steal. It's going to be all over my social media. You go follow her. She's hilarious. She's fantastic. A, a-, a Shelby recommended <laughs> Shelby comedian, endorsed. Which Shelby endorsed, which is very important. Everyone knows how much we love Shelby's opinion. Uh, let's do some emails. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. What is this sitch? Jared, last year I moved to a new city, had a career change. I'm a woman and this is a very male dominated field. I started casually dating a guy in the same industry. We did not work together, but we know all the same work people. I ended things after a few months because he was shady about communication among other things. He told me he loved me, which seemed really soon. I thanked him for telling me his feelings, but did not return the sentiment. But he also asked if we could have an open relationship so he could go away on some weekends and have short-term flings. Okay, well, okay. (laughs) Listen, if that's how you live your life, those are two different people with two different things that they're into. Yes. Fine. Okay. Perhaps surprisingly, it was an amicable breakup and things weren't awkward. And a couple times we ran into each other before lockdown. The only platform we added each other on was Instagram. I started dating someone a few months ago and I posted him in my stories. So my ex knows I'm seeing someone new. He has not reached out to talk since the breakup, yet he watches every one of my stories and likes all of my posts. I don't watch his stories or like his posts, but I have looked at his feed a couple times and saw that he's posted other women. I have no idea if he's seeing them or not, but figured he's moved on either way. I haven't unfollowed or blocked him since uh, since someone in our larger work group had a had mic- had mild ex drama that was heavily scrutinized, and I'm not trying to be the next subject of slack gossip i get that Mm, yeah is he trying to get me to look at his instagram to let me know he's over me is he letting me know he's still interested or and around if i become single again does he want a reaction from me and should i go ahead and just block him even if it elicits drama in my workplace so kath what do you think of this situation um i i i wish i knew how old these people were how old did she Mm -hmm. say she was did she say? She didn't get into it. I, I, we can, I can assure you that the demo of this podcast is like, let's say it's twenty-five to forty, because this, I mean, this issue could really be about anyone. It's, a, it's a guy who you work around that you know who's, um, he yet he watches every one of my stories and likes all of my posts. All of my posts is an interesting, mm. <laughs> like if it's every single one. That seems like it might be a message, yeah. but I I don't know. I think like my policy with people like this, because I, I think I have a few, I, I've been in a similar situation before. Are you seeing anyone now? I'm not. No. Do you I, have uh, people, do you have people that you notice who watch your stories? Yes, I absolutely yeah. do. Um, I have a few people who reply to like all of my stories despite getting no uh, feedback from me, which is I, interesting, <laughs> but like not it, does, it doesn't bother me. It's just like I'm I, I don't know what your end game is here. So I understand well, that puzzlement uh, that she has as as a as a, as a great creep once said, <laughs> every Instagram story is an opportunity. Yes. The fact that a reply goes directly to the DMs for Instagram stories is like yeah. the most diabolical genius <laughs> mechanism that a social media platform has uh, invented. It's definitely, incredible. Definitely invented by a guy who wanted to talk to a girl he used to go to high school with at Instagram. Yes. He's like, hey, guys, <laughs> I got an idea. What if every story I can send a fire emoji just to let them know I think they look good tonight? Yeah. What if I could do that? 
<laughs> yeah, with just a click of a button. And yeah. honestly, it's most of the time it's flattering and appreciated and fine. It's a very passive way to be a creep. Mm-hmm. And I, I respect that. But like, I think usually when I'm in these kinds of situations that are like socially delicate like this, I think they're kind of best to just treat at face value because then it puts the ball in the other person's court. Like, yeah. you don't have to you don't have to decipher this guy's intention. If you're not looking at his stuff and you're not interested, then you can continue to not be interested. I think if it bothers her, then she should she should consider muting him. I think that's like a, a way that you can get somebody to like not look at your shit without it being as aggressive as a block. Sure. Um but if it doesn't bother her, it's like, just treat it like a dude you broke up with amicably who's happy to see that you're doing well. And if it doesn't mean that, then that's on him to communicate. Yeah, I, I, I'm i with you. I, I think what you're... You said a couple of things that, I, I, that have to be talked about. The, <laughs> the idea that she's looking at this through the prism of what does he think is, is kind of the wrong perspective. She is bothered by this. She is being, it is eliciting emotions because that's why she wrote to us. She's Mm -hmm. saying, you know, what's he trying to let me know? What's he trying to do? He has, I don't, I do this, but he does all this other stuff. I think she has to switch her perspective. Is it bothering you because you like miss him? Is it bother you because, because it's just like you want to know if he's trying to get I, I what what emotions is it sparking you is it holding are you just getting annoyed that's okay too are you just like uh, uh every time I see it kind of brings me down it's someone that didn't that wanted to be with me but not exclusively with me so it brings me down to a bad place you have to like come to terms with your own feelings about this viewer yeah if if your own feelings are bad you block that's what yeah. you do you block you uh you just make or block them from watching your stories just that yeah. alone that you can do it in quiet ways if he comes to you and says something to you you go hey like i every time i saw you you have to be a bit vulnerable you have to go every time i saw you in my feed it kind of made me feel a little bit badly cuz not because i don't like you but because you're someone who kind of turned me down or it didn't work out with and i'd re- I, for my Mental health. The the phrase mental health gets us out of a lot of shit. You just say, yeah. for my mental health, I just felt like removing you from my stories from that list was good for me. Do it through the prism of me, not through yes. him. Now- That's a great way to put it. Just, it, it doesn't matter what he means. How do you feel about it? Yeah. And act accordingly. And I completely understand, like, not wanting to be because i'm thinking about this okay it's a woman in a male-dominated industry who is dating someone who is in that industry as a stand-up comedian like i know how that can be (laughs) so like i totally get why she's worried about that but at the end of the day it is like you don't you don't you definitely don't know don't owe anyone besides him an explanation and honestly you don't really owe him an explanation if you don't want to give him one so no, and, and if he wants one, he can ask now yeah. it now it, look, that, that's step one is like, OK, what are my feelings with it? I love that you said passive. You use the word passive, which I think is very important. All of this stuff is passive. He he has your number. He has your DM. He can get in touch with you. If, if he if he was so interested, he would make the date. Guys aren't out here not trying to have sex, not yeah. trying to be with the, the woman that they want to be with. So. You have to trust that, here's what I'll tell you. When he likes every one of your things, he has proposed to you an open relationship before. I wouldn't doubt that this guy is showing you that how unaffected he is. I'm still here. Anytime yeah. you're ready, I'm always, the door's always open. A lot of people live in this world on Instagram, and when you get like a, when you get a reaction to your stories from men, that's them kind of saying, I would if you came to me. Like, yeah, it, it, yeah. you know, like, it's like you make all the effort, but know that this, the, this is know possible. That you, you, yeah. You, you'll be met with kind and kind intentions. Like, <laughs> I, I, and I, I think that's kind of what he, the, the idea that like he's, I don't think there's a second level. She asked if he, he, it, to yeah. let her know he's over me. He doesn't care that much. He cares just enough to look at you because he thinks you're good looking and he wants to maybe let you know that. I'm here and friendly. That's it. Right? Yeah. I I think that also, yeah, the other side of that too is like, 
she doesn't have to do anything with the knowledge that he might be interested. Like you don't have to make any decisions with that information right now. Yeah. Like it's it's not your problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. J-train. It might be an opportunity in the future, Shh. but perhaps Shh. not right now, you know? We are sponsor people. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Native Deodorant. Wow. New year, new me. That's what I do. I am a resolution person. I think you make the goal so you can get as close as you can to it. And we're all doing goals in different ways. You might have a goal that's way up on the peak of the mountaintop, and mine is just a hill. And for some of us, it's just putting better stuff on your body. And that's where Native Deodorant comes in. Give yourself a fresh start with Native Deodorant. It's self-care. They have fresh scents. And Native's aluminum-free deodorant is a great addition to your 2021 routine. Native cares about what you put on your armpits. That's why their deodorant's ingredients list includes things you've actually heard of like coconut oil and shea butter. You know those. That's great. Another plus, none of their products are tested on animals and almost everything is vegan. Switching to Native from an antiperspirant doesn't mean you'll have to worry about that midday BO either. Native will have you walking around smelling like coconut and vanilla. Coconut and vanilla, I like that. Citrus and herbal, musk. Oh, citrus and herbal musk. Ooh, I have the lavender and rosé. I love that and I feel good when I put it on. You can choose from over 10 cents, including their classics and rotating seasonals. I'm a fan of the rotating seasonals. I loved the Christmas smells. I loved that they were a little different, made you feel like, you know, the seasons were changing and made you feel in the festive mood. So you're guaranteed to find one that you will love. Native Deodorant has over 16,000 five-star reviews and has been featured in the Today Show for a reason it works. Make the switch to Native today by going to nativedeo.com slash JTrain. Let me say that again. nativedeo.com slash JTrain. Or use promo code JTrain, JTrain, JTrain when you check out and get 20, 20 percent off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash JTrain or use promo code JTrain at checkout for 20% off your first order. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Upstart. You know that credit card, the one that you're afraid to look at to see what the balance is? If you've been avoiding your debt, it's time to confront it. Upstart can help you face it and finally pay it off. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. That's a huge deal. You get to see what the rate is online. You can make a choice from there. So what this is doing is offering you the opportunity of knowledge. The more you know, the more you're going to save, the better you are going to be. And it's the new year. We all have our goals. This might be one of yours. Yours might be eliminating debt. Well, what's a way to find a $20 bill in your virtual pocket? That's finding that you could be paying a lower rate than you are paying currently, especially when you bundle together all your debt. You can say, whoa, together the rate is this, and now Upstart is offering me something a little bit easier for me to pay. So you can get approved the same day and can receive funds as fast as one business day. If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how low your Upstart... Well, hold on. Let me go back. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today. So find out how they can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash JTrain. That's upstart.com slash JTrain. What I love about this sponsor is that it offers you just the ability to check it out. That's what they're saying. If you have debt, if, you have, if you're in, in a pinch for some money, Upstart's the place to go. A f- great place to start your investigation. That's upstart.com slash JTrain. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you upstart.com slash jtrain loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application go to upstart.com slash jtrain jtrain podcast at gmail.com jtrain podcast at 
gmail.com. Here with Kath Barbadoro. Go, go, go. Follow Kath. At Kath Barbadoro. What a time to be alive. Lie, cheat, and steal. That's the two podcasts. Go get involved. J Train. I would like to know your take on the variety. Uh, okay. This is a crazy. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to read this email. I just picked it out of the blue because it was short enough. Sometimes I just pick it because it's short. Uh, it's no subject. I didn't know that this was a thing. Okay. I wanted you to know your take on the variety sizes labia there are in the world. I didn't know. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's, it's rarely talked about, so I thought I'd stir the pot a little. My inner labia, for those who don't know, there is inner and outer labia. I didn't know. Do we know about this? It's true. Yeah, I, d okay. I did know about it. It is a little known fact, though. Okay. I, I mean, I... <laughs> Listen, I am so bad with this stuff. I wouldn't even know my own body. I, that's why I'm asking if you know. <laughs> is a bit bigger and sticking out from my outer labia. Okay, so my inner labia is a bit bigger and sticking out from my in outer labia. It is something that's been bothering me for a long time, so I've decided to get labia surgery. Yes, I'm getting a designer vagina. I love that. <laughs> I love the description of it. I think if she's to meet a guy in the future and call it her designer vagina, I think... Only the best of men will, will be on board for that. Yeah, absolutely. My girlfriend just yelled, ow. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Designer V. I, I listen, <laughs> going with the Louie. Um, Mine is the Louie. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like I'm dating a child. Uh, what else is there? To, okay, so I'm getting a designer vagina. What else is there to do during these times? Am I right? Basically, they're going. <laughs> That's a great reason. I, <laughs> I love, love that. It. <laughs> Basically, they're going to trim the inner labia so that it doesn't stick out. I'm very happy and excited about my decision. I think my quality of life will be improved. It's worth noting that I have never had a guy commenting on the look of my vagina or guys running away. Quite the contrary. I've had a I've had problems with attracting guys or keeping them in. I, I, ha I haven't had problems with attracting guys or keeping them interested in me. All in all, this decision doesn't come from past rejections. It's something I want to do for myself to physically be more comfortable and feel the best about myself and live out my sexuality to the fullest. Before I made a decision, I was questioning myself if doing it would be a non-feminist move. I've had a gynecologist tell me that I'm perfectly normal and as a woman, I should be proud of my vagina. After thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that I have to do what's best for me and not worry about the world, how the world would react. My question, I guess, is how do guys feel about the size of the labia? I'm just curious if guys ever talk about it. I would love to hear your honest perspective and opinion. I like that she was like... Um, she write, thanks for doing the God's work. Uh, excited for crotchless panties. Well, I'm excited for you. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say it's funny that she's like, people. I'm not sure if it's a feminist move. So what do guys think about it? I, I yeah. think it's a <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this, Kath? What are your, what, any opinions? Um, I, I, first of all, I think that like, she is the master of her own domain. And if she has decided she wants to do this, good for her it doesn't matter what anybody thinks it sounds like she's really considered it and uh if she thinks it's gonna make her happy then absolutely why not um but yeah, I, I do think like it it does bum me out that she's insecure about that because so what she means like the outer labia is like the part that looks like skin you mm -hmm. know and then the inner labia is the part that looks like vagina. So hold on, hold on. I'm taking notes. <laughs> I yeah. I, I, I so I, she's I, basically saying she has an Audi instead of an innie, which is very totally common. Totally makes sense. And, and like, I, I I totally make sense. And I I've heard men. I can understand where there are men that speak badly, immature men. Listen, I I'm not going to lie to people and say I haven't heard a guy talk about like, you know roast beef like that's like yeah, kind of said amongst high school kids i would hope an older man wouldn't use such phrases i'm just saying like the idea that like like let's live in reality the idea that men aren't disgusting about this <laughs> is, is, is ridiculous men are disgusting about this and mean because everyone male or female or whatever you are everyone has the capacity to be mean i sure. i would say that i don't hear about this now as a 35 year old man I, I don't have men come to me like my buddies don't come to me and go whoa the lips on that one like i <laughs> you know like yeah like i, I oh, she looked like one of the real housewives of new york like it never comes up that way 
And so I, I think like the discussion of it, I, it's a lot of guys are just really proud to be with a woman they're attracted to. Yeah. It I doesn't matter thing, what's going on. Yeah. You know, it, that's the thing is like, I, there's absolutely like, yeah, I'm, it, it, there are clear aesthetic preferences for vaginas built into our, uh, culture and our sure. sexual imagery and that's just how it is. And not yeah. every vagina looks like that. I think probably most of them <laughs> don't look exactly <laughs> like that. But I do think there's like a very big difference between what somebody is aesthetically interested in in terms of an image sure. and what someone is actually turned on by in a sexual situation. And Interesting. I think that like, yeah, I'm I'm a straight woman like, I don't think most men care a lot about what specifically the vagina looks like as long as it has all of the parts and isn't something where you'd be like, whoa, and like, it's probably going to be just fine, you know? Um, and again, I say that as like, I'm, I've been overweight my whole life. And uh, again, like mm-hmm. I don't meet physically the objective sort of aesthetic uh determinations of what is considered attractive but like i have never really had problems with men or like with sex because what people are actually into is not necessarily the same as like what a construction worker would have on his calendar in the break room you know (laughs) that that old construction worker calendar (laughs) no i'm with you i say it on this podcast all the time like like there's gonna be a guy that like I think there's going to be more guys that are like, oh, I love the lips. This is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> like there's a, I think the likelihood is of a guy being more into you for how you are than yeah. less into you for what you are. Because if they're in the bed with you, they were attracted to so much more that, that yeah. got them to vagina land. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I'm with you 100 percent. And I say it on this podcast all the time. Like there are pe- men on masturbating to feet so like yeah <laughs> you're someone's foot whatever there's someone out there but i think with that's vagi- so sweet you're yeah. someone's foot it's true this absolutely is a, true this is a line that i've said many a times this <laughs> podcast you, you know to, to direct yourself based on what you know the maximum amount of guys will be into like you'd be you'd drive yourself crazy because you'd be like yeah like like i mean look at how look at when men cheat they all everyone goes with her and you're like yeah it doesn't, that's not about, what do yeah. you compare, com, what's the baseline here? So I, I think like she should be, I think also to me, I'm not going to mansplain feminism to someone, but to me, like being confident in your body is a form of feminism, right? Like, absolutely. Yeah, I think and, so. And, and going and like being like being happy with the vagina you got going, like, when you you know if you're walking a little straighter because you got to you're happier with yourself this is great this is what you you should do so i i think like the what guys think it's not a worthy adventure for your mind to go on what guys think if they're in the bed with you if they've gotten a vagina land they are so happy to be there that i i think that they're going to be happy with whatever they see that's my thought yeah and it's kind of a win win because it's like Whatever you have, they're gonna. If you tell them you have a v- designer vagina, they're gonna love that too. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no wrong way to be. And uh, yeah, it's. I mean, if you think about it, like, like there are definitely like dicks that I've seen that I've been like, I've seen a better dick than that. Sure, but like, it's never been a problem. It's never been like, yeah. man, if only your dick was prettier, then <laughs> yeah, this maybe would go somewhere. But we don't have a future, you know, Ma- male or female you don't hear a lot of stories where someone's like, ah! like they, like they see whatever's <laughs> yeah. in front of them and they just like freak out and shove you out of the way <laughs> yeah. as if a fire just broke out in the kitchen. Yeah. J train podcast at gmail.com J train podcast at gmail.com. We got a lifestyle question. We love a good lifestyle question here. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Crazy sister-in-law and COVID worries. Um, My problem isn't romantic, but of a lifestyle in-law nature. For background, my husband and I are in our early 30s. We have a two-year-old daughter, and I'm about seven months pregnant now. My sister-in-law and her husband are late 30s and have one four-year-old son. She and I are cordial, but not close by any means. 
In fact, I really can't stand her. <laughs> I pretty much assume anyone that's like, we're not close by any means is like, that's code for, I can't fucking stand that person. Yeah, yeah by I, any means, that <laughs> means you fucking hate that person. <laughs> yeah. So her, uh, she can be very mature, throws a complete fit when things don't go her way. Her son's birthday is coming up and he wa- and she wants us all to get together that day. Her family and her husband's family, her in-laws are flying up from the South to spend his birthday and holidays with them and staying at their house. Due to COVID, my husband and I have been pretty strict about who we see and where we go. The idea of a 20-person get-together makes me very nervous, especially being pregnant. I am especially uneasy about being around her in-laws after they've traveled. I brought this up to her mom, a.k.a. my mother-in-law. Okay, so... It's her mom, so it's her brother's sister. It's her spouse's sister, right? Her spouse's sister, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the mom, so she doesn't like the sister, but she's talking to the mother-in-law. I brought this up to my mother-in-law, and she told me the visitors would, quote-unquote, probably get tested. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-oh. I don't think that... I don't think that's happening. Uh, That's not really a good assurance for me to risk it. I know if we don't show up for his birthday, my sis-in-law will freak out. It will turn into a huge thing. I'm not sure what to do. A reasonable person would understand, but my sister-in-law is completely unreasonable. Any advice on how to handle this is greatly appreciated. So, Kath, I, I, I think, like, I'm happy someone would send this into this podcast because I've been... I've tried to keep a level head with all this stuff. I can understand... Someone going to the party, and I can understand someone saying this isn't for me. Like I, I and I don't mean I, I'm not here to encourage anyone to go to you know 20 person gatherings and start licking each other. But I'm also listen. They're doing it. That's the reality we live in. Yeah. And I, I don't think this person emailing in is being ridiculous at all to see to see a situation go. That one isn't for me. I'm backing out. But I, I do understand that this is very difficult with people. COVID is the highlighter on all the bad in our society. It is the thing that takes, you know, that takes you from my sister, you know, that we're cordial, but not close by any means to we fucking hate each other. So (laughs) like that is (laughs) what COVID does. That's the, I think that's the greater disease that people are dealing with every day. So what do you think? Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think, um, it's, it's hard because it's especially when you already have this pre-existing relationship where you don't mm. like this person. If you decide not to go, it's going to be read as judgment and it's probably yeah. going to be very tempted. You're you're probably going to be very tempted to act judgmental. Like and yeah. I understand the temptation to do that. Um I think it's something really worth trying to fight against. I don't think it's good for everybody to be as judgy as we have been of each other because we have been put in a completely impossible situation with no yeah. guidance. And yeah. yes, some people are being very stupid, but also life is very complicated. And, yeah. you know, everybody has a different level of, of safety that they're comfortable with. That said, like, I certainly wouldn't go to this party. Um, mm-hmm. But... I, th- I think the thing that I've been thinking about with the holidays and COVID and stuff is when you have these dysfunctional relationships, like, yeah, her, her sister-in-law probably is going to throw a fit, yeah. but going to that party would not have repaired your relationship. It sure. still would have been shitty. And if you ultimately are going to uh, have a workable relationship, she will get over her tantrum. And yeah. when we all have the vaccine, you guys can see each other again and you can try to smooth it over. Yeah. And if she's not going to forgive you, then she's not going to forgive you. But you she, don't like her anyway. It, yeah. And it was going to be something else. Yes. It, it exactly. wasn't this. It, this is a, a time bomb that just got sped up by our friend, Mr. COVID, Mrs. COVID. So I, I, I agree with you. I think you got to come in with love and leave with love. And yes. And if she throws the temper tantrum, nobody can blame the person that is not judging. I love what you said about, you know, you got to reserve judgment as much as hard as that can be. You've judged her in your email, which this is the place for judgment. This is where you should send it in. This yeah. is the place <laughs> to give us context and color. But for her, you don't have to do that. So I think you come in with love, you leave with love. And when people come to you, she can never change the she can change the story but you can you got the quotes and yeah. <laughs> so let's keep it short let's keep it sweet let's keep it without judgment so i think it goes like this hey i think if it's a text i think it, it's a call 
because you got to <laughs> have the mirror, the tone of your voice. And I think you call her. You go straight to her. Hey, I am. I love you. So I want to start by saying I love you so much. I love your family so much. I love my nephew so much. It kills me the situation that we're in as a planet right now that I'm pregnant and I really don't feel great going to a big party while pregnant during COVID. I hope you can understand that because the last thing in the world that I want to do is miss your, miss my, my nephew's, my nephew who I love's birthday party. But I know that I wouldn't be a fun time at this party. So that's now a great way to put it. You take, yeah. you take the brunt. And before you make this call, Get your husband on board. You guys need to have a unified a, front. A unified front, and then your husband can go to the mother-in-law, give her the same story, but you keep it short because she's gonna go. What? You can't come to the party. That's hey, I love you. Always repeat, I love you. I love my nephew. I. This is like a really hard decision for me. Let her know it's a hard decision. I'm not judging you. I. I think I wish I could be there. I'll be there over Zoom if you if you'll let me. Like make it so it's like you're giving nothing but options except for the option of you coming. And that's it. Yeah. That's that's a great way to do it. I think there's been a lot of people. I saw this thread on Twitter that made me really angry a while ago of mm. like basically being like if your family wants you to come to Thanksgiving, they don't care if you die. And it's like that's not the attitude not, to go into this with. Like you don't don't, you're not you can't be like you're trying to kill me like that's not ever no. going to be how well, you resolve this. it's the problem <laughs> with it's the problem with COVID is that there's always uh you always win the game of morality mountain it's like nothing yeah. beats nothing beats you're killing people and it's like yeah. that's not an actual that's not really a fair way to go about it as much it's as not. you might be right but and it's like listen Let's then then let me follow you for a week and make sure you've been COVID safe with every single decision you've made. And that, that's the thing where we like and it's like over the Internet, that Twitter f thread would piss me off because over the Internet's the easiest place to do it. Try being yeah. this woman. Try being this woman talking to an in-law that she's not sure that, you know, to her sister-in-law. You know, why don't you why don't you really like it's like it, people used to say it's like, yeah, Twitter's a place for people who don't like getting punched in the face. It's also for a place. <laughs> Twitter's also a place for people who don't like talking to their dads and yeah, don't like talking yeah, yeah. to their cousins. So, like, this is one of those situations where I admire her braveness of like, hey, I'm going to stick to my guns. Um, and I think you get the empathy you give out. So if you yes. give this person empathy, they'll give it back. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Hello Tushy. New rear, new you. In 2021, don't just make a commitment to wash your hands every time you poop. Go the extra mile and wash your butt. I love that. Oh, new rear, new you. That's what it's all about. I love the tushy. Oh, my God. I can't tell you enough times to get involved with the tushy community. I'm telling you right now. This is this you want to improve your 2021? I mean 2020 was garbage. It's a low bar that we have to get over. I think a hello tushy will make your year better. You'll walk away and you'll walk away confidently knowing you got a clean butthole. So I'm telling you right now. The future of toileting has arrived. Okay, it's technically been around for centuries, but hideously expensive, costing thousands of dollars. I I, I can tell you that anytime you stay at a fancy hotel, you're like, "What is this?" kind of toilet what is this my parents used to have a bidet when we when i was younger and it it, it was like it was interesting to me because i was like how does the water come out i don't even understand this it, 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 and then it just became like the treadmill becomes a a clothes hanger that kind of happened to the bidet no one actually knew how to use it and now the brand new hello tushy 3.0 modern bidet attachment is here to level the playing field it's stylish eco-friendly easy to install and affordable hello tushy 3.0 doesn't just cleanse your butt with a precise stream of fresh water it cleans itself before and after it's used with the Smart Spray Automatic Self-Cleaning Nozzle. That's huge. Now you're not cleaning it up afterwards. It's cleaning you, then it's cleaning itself. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. 
eighty percent. I just said eighty percent. I, I can attest to this. Um, you want to help your wallet. You're not going to Amazon every five seconds for toilet paper. You're not running out to CVS. No. With the Hello Tushy, you're going to be on one roll for quite a while. So the Hello Tushy is actually paying for itself in a few months. Because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe it all. You just poop, spray, dry, and go. I do a little dab. I think you're going to use one square, which is fine. I, I mean, I mean, compared to what? That's, that's the you know, if you're sitting there rolling around your fingers... This is an improvement at minute one, saving money, saving your butthole. And sanitation is simple. The Schmutz Shield offers cle- cleaning and the knobs are naturally antimicrobial. Plus, every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Already got a tush on your pot? Upgrade to the new 3.0 model. If you're new to the revolution, joins millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every flush. Go to hellotushy.com slash JTrain to get 10, 10, 10, 10 percent off. This is a special offer for our listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash JTrain for 10 percent off. That's hellotushy.com slash JTrain. JTrain podcast at gmail.com. JTrain podcast at gmail.com. Here with Kath Barbadoro. Kath Barbadoro. Uh, at Kath Barbadoro, go, go, go. Her podcast, What a Time to Be Alive, Lie, Cheat, and Steal. Two different podcasts. Great way to spend your day. I sent you an email before we started. Do you want to pull that up? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, I am going to... Yes, got it. So this is called Work Email Bandit. We like to do a little screenshot one at the end of the show. This is a little different because it's an email screenshot that we're getting. Okay, I'm going to read the email and then we'll go over the email together. You ready? Yeah. Hi, Jared. Love the podcast. You're the best therapist out here. Let me start by saying I'm not a therapist, but thank you. (laughs) Uh, I'm a comedian who's doing shows in um, Indianapolis for New Year's Eve. uh, Jaredfree.com, Jaredfree.com, Jaredfree.com. Background information. I went on three dates with this with this man from my hometown in December 2019. I had asked if you wanted to come hang out at my family's shore house around the holidays because they had a lot of outdoor Christmas stuff going on. He said no and that it was too serious. We kept text, uh, texting through the new year, and I found out this man has major temper slash emotional issues. He randomly snapped out on me in January and sent me a list of things he hated about my personality. I have a thick skin and confidence, so it didn't upset me, but pissed me the fuck off that he thought he could speak to me like that. He said things like I was childish, immature. Nobody would ever take me seriously because of my looks, etc. The list was absurd and out of line. I blocked him on Instagram and blocked his number. Then he sent me a long ass message on Snapchat. I was like, shit, I forgot to block him there too. So I blocked him there too. Fast forward to October 2020 last week where this motherfucker, she put in all caps, somehow (laughs) finds my work email and sends this. Okay. Okay. So this is October 2020 after they had a falling out in January 2020. Okay? I'm going to read it, but we'll flash it on the screen. And I want to get your reaction. She basically is just asking, what the fuck? Yeah. Okay? (laughs) She needs someone to commiserate with, and I don't blame her. (laughs) She has chosen the J-Train podcast and Kath and J-Train to go over with. Okay, so it's titled, Hi, You Were Right. (laughs) I'll be, I'll be, I'll be flip out pants. Um, I just want to say that you were right about me, that I didn't, we should have Shelby, if you're listening, let's get some like sad music, right? Sad music. We need to get some melodrama in here. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. Hi, you were right. I just want to say that you were right about me, that I didn't know what I meant, what I wanted. And I was scared. I said that stuff that I really didn't mean because I didn't even realize at the time that I was afraid. I've taken a lot of time to figure things out for myself since then, and it was completely because I was afraid of falling for you and getting hurt. I genuinely liked you, to this, and to this day, I still miss being able to joke around with you and get daily abuse. Okay, okay. A little bit of a weird turn. What if it just went into, like, the weird sex stuff that they did? Like, like, Yeah. That is, like, the... Like, I'm sure that means something specific to her, but as a third party... 
an odd <laughs> choice of words. <laughs> yeah, like I'm sure they ball bust a few times. But exactly. I, yeah. <laughs> but like if the next sentence was, I don't know what to do with my leather mask, I'd be like, okay, yeah. I, I, I should have seen that coming. Okay. Right. <laughs> I know I suck and you are justified in having me blocked. This was the only way I could figure out. I figured I could reach you and say that you were right. I'm upset that I fucked everything up because I genuinely wanted to take the dive and really do all the stuff with you. But I obviously can't change what I said. Hope to hear from you, even if it's to tell me I'm a shithead or something. If there's anything I can do to make this up to you, I would. If not, then at least you know you were right. And it's been almost a year and still think about that in you as a person. And scene. So, Kath. What the fuck? What do we think? Oh, man. I just... Getting this in your work email is so... <laughs> like, the day is over. Yeah. You're done. <laughs> I you, love, ain't, I, you ain't doing the TPS reports. It's over. Yeah. It's it's time to clock out for the afternoon. Yeah. Um, I do think it would be nice to get an email with the subject line, Hi, you were right. That is like <laughs> the one positive thing about this email. Hang um, that in the cubicle. Just... <laughs> Subject line, put that up, make a, you know, make a little nice, you know, art piece of art. Yeah, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, do a little collage. Yeah. Uh, I, just for the, for the hard times. Have I mean, you, have you ever, let me ask you, I'll pose a question to you. Have you ever gotten the post relationship email? Because that is a thing. I, I have, I have, and I have also sent one, which I'm not. Uh, women super love the proud post. Of. <laughs> women love the post relationship email. I once got a post relationship email. I didn't even open it. I forwarded it to a friend. I go, "Can you just tell me how bad this is?" And he was like, "Yeah, don't read it. You, you, yeah. you don't need that." And, and I, it's like and that was for them more than you. It uh, that's the thing is it's always for you more than it's for the person who it's being sent to now like mm -hmm. I have not done that I, I learned my lesson and now I will sometimes write a letter but it's you write the letter and then you wait like two weeks and if you still really want to send it fine but like it's good advice that it's for you it's cathartic like this this email that that this woman was sent was clearly to make this guy feel better and well sorry to interrupt but the the, the biggest line of that is um, I'm, I'm upset that I fucked everything up because I genuinely wanted to take the dive and really do all that stuff with you, but I obviously can't change what I said. Like, no, you didn't. You, you didn't yeah. want to do that stuff. Like, he, he's, uh, it's a lot of revisionist history. You know, for, yeah. for someone to say all those things, like, he has a lot of, you know, to say the, the things that he wrote to her, that she wrote, um, I was childish, immature. That's all lashing out of someone with low... Um, um, confidence because yeah. the, the biggest line of it, nobody would ever take me seriously because of my looks. That is someone who is small. That is someone who's insecure. That's someone who doesn't believe they even deserve to be dating someone like you. That's what they're basically yeah. saying because but to take you, because I'm, it sounds like this person might be an attractive person to many, whatever that many may be. Yeah. He is trying to take her down a notch because he knows that, you know, he knows that about her. And, and I, it's like a line like that that kind of reveals him as insecure and going through his own stuff and really selfish because he took those things out on you and now he's trying to go through therapy through you. Right. It's making it your problem. Like, yeah. I think I, when I read this, the, the first thing I thought about was about how in 12-step programs, when they have you kind of make amends to people who you've hurt through your, your uh, addiction or substance mm. use or whatever, but there's a caveat in, in that process where it's like, you're not supposed to do it if it is going to hurt the person you hurt further. Like you're you're yeah. only supposed to do it if it's somebody who you already kind of are in regular communication with and it's not going to mm -hmm. bring up all this bad stuff. And so it abs like even if this is completely genuine and this guy does genuinely regret the way he acted, the fact that you have blocked him on every single platform and that he has to email you at work should be a sign that he just has to sit with these feelings and deal with them like an adult and not try to get absolution through you. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting at the end of this where he says, and this is always the case with stuff like this, he just wants a response. He's like, yeah. even if you call me a shithead, email me back. 
don't email this guy back I anything. Don't. I don't. I love that you found. I love that you picked out the same line that I was just thinking about. Is the if you, I hate even if it's to tell me I'm a shithead or something. It's like you, he doesn't deserve that. No. He, yeah. That's him just trying to get a rise out of you, trying to have a fun because you like. The response to that is, you know, you really are a shithead. And then you smile at him and then you guys and then, the, you know, the, the studio audience goes, oh, you know, like that's that's what he's he's looking for you to soften to him. And yeah, so that he doesn't feel that, as bad about himself. It's either that or it's another thing for him to narcissistically wallow in, which mm. is like just as self-centered of like it. People like this when, when you're. When you're dealing with this stuff, but you're not mature enough to understand your actual impact on other people, you're never just a piece of shit. You're the biggest piece of shit that ever lived. Yeah. And like that becomes the way that you aggrandize yourself when you have low self-esteem and you need to like, if you're going to elevate yourself, you're going to elevate yourself even in that negative feeling. Yeah. He's made, you're totally right. And he's making himself her responsibility. Like yeah. that. And Nobody needs that. Nobody needs that right now. Listen, why'd he send it? It's 2020. There's less people to talk to. I'm sure he's, re everyone's being a little bit reflective right now. It's getting yeah. colder. Nobody's hugging me. I need people. I get it. Like, I, I like the, the way he comes to you in this email, like, I'm not sitting here going, oh, he emailed in October after Jan. No, no, no. This, this all fucking tracks. But you don't yeah. have to be a part of his thing. It's not your responsibility. He will one day find himself to professionals. Yeah. You are not that person. <laughs> yeah. Not your problem. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Kath Barbadoro. Thank you so much. You were such a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. This was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. So much fun. You're so great. I want everyone to go follow you at Kath Barbadoro on Instagram. The, uh, the podcast, what a time to be alive. Lie, cheat and steal. Go get involved. Go get involved with What a Time to Be Alive first because that's our that's our boy Shelby's. Yeah. Uh, that's the connective tissue of this podcast. So that is a way to help our friend Classic Shelb um, to you know move along his career along with both of us. So that's a that's a great way to get involved. So Exactly. Thank you, Kath. I'm Jared Freed. We're here Mondays and Thursdays with your emails, your stories, your questions. We'll be back next episode. Boom. Don't forget to like the video you just watched. I have many more. Subscribe to the channel right now. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, you fool. There's even a bell you can click to. Now you've got your week set Monday through Friday. I'm here for you.